Hello, everybody. Just wanted to uh, reintroduce one of our favorite set of guests here on the uh, Train Your Brain podcast, and that would be John and Laura Grant. And, uh, you know, most people know the story. I'm not going to take too much time introducing, but if you haven't seen the story, uh, please go to uh, stay or, you know, punch in the hashtag Stay Strong Johnny Grant on Instagram or Facebook. Um, you can also see at um, Laura B. Pilates, right? Is that it? On uh, yes, Inst right. Instagram. Uh, one of the most amazing and inspiring stories, and we've been lucky enough and blessed enough and privileged enough to be a part of this process that, um, that John and Laura have been through, along with uh, some other truly amazing health providers and uh, spiritual advisors, et cetera. Uh, this has really just been one of the most, in my 20 years of practice, one of the most uh, incredible things to be a part of and, and really more so because you all are who you are and that is just awesome, awesome people. So thank you all for being who you are and thank you all for coming on. And uh, what we're gonna do is, um, We'll uh, just I'll talk about the topic, and if you have any just initial thoughts, we'll we'll get into that. But the topic for today is is quarantine hab. We've been calling it quarantine hab because we're getting all kinds of requests from people as to what do we need to do during this incredible um, you know world health crisis, uh, you know particularly national crisis where everybody's kind of holed up in their homes, uh, not knowing what to do. But this is impacting the the TBI traumatic brain injury worlds um, more than most, at least from where we sit, and I'm sure from where you sit. So uh, we'll get into that in just a moment, but uh, how are you guys doing? Doing great. So good to see you. John, awesome. say hi. Hey, buddy. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So what's going on in, in Raleigh, North Carolina? How are you guys doing out there? It is hot outside. Yeah. We have a lot of humidity, right? Gotcha. So just, okay. yeah. Got to come to the mountains. It's about uh, probably about 15 degrees cooler up here and raining That's every day. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So Good I day. went out for a run today and I was like, I don't know. I came inside. My mom had come by and she's like, it looks like you jumped in the pool. I was like, I know. It's so humid. Humid. Right. That's, yeah, we, we haven't hit that. We haven't hit that just yet. So yeah. now um, I've, you know, we have, I think last we saw you all was probably face-to-face, uh, -face, person to person, I believe it was in February. And it's amazing how much time has transpired since then. And, um, you know, what we're doing is now we're keeping, um, you know, up with you all, you know, based on, on posts and all. And, and I'll tell you, I've seen some pretty amazing things, even in the absence of, you know, uh, quote unquote, professional rehabilitation, training, guidance, et cetera. Um, you all seem to be just pushing the needle regardless of, of uh, you know, of what's happening with this situation or not. Um, you know, I've seen, I'm just talking about that, but John mowing the lawn, I love it. I love it, John. That is so cool. Did you, mow, <laughs> did you mow the lawn today? Did you? No, not today. No, not today? All right. But today you rode your bicycle though. Too human, good, good. Did you get the double bicycle? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. I, I, you know, I think with everything, it's been <clears throat> delayed, but I cannot wait to get the, 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 what is it? The trike, not the, um, the tandem. Two, yeah. Right. Okay. Right. He got a bicycle cool. for his birthday, though. It was a tricycle, like a, an adult tricycle. It's I saw amazing. that. That is so cool. So cool. And, and that's perfect. I mean, just this massive tricycle you would see in, like, you know, the movie Big or something like that, uh, where it, it's, you know, it provides such a purpose. And, you know, for you all to be doing things like that, even in the midst of this crisis where you can't get out, you can't do things, you're finding newer and newer ways to, um, you know, keep the brain stimulated, keep the body active. Um, and that's why we're talking about this, because so many people are stuck. And again, I call it quarantine hab because people are, uh, have been relegated to doing high level physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, functional neurology. Uh, um, via distance, via telehealth, via screen. And, and you can't do this type of re rehabilitation for the most part via screen, correct? Correct, yeah. right. Have you all dabbled? Have you tried doing any telehealth at this point? No, not really. Okay. No, we kind of stayed away from screens as much as possible. Good for you. Um, yeah, I just, I, I try to just incorporate what we have around the house, like we'll talk about. Um, right. We'll just kind of stay on top of things. But you know, I, I just try to take tidbits outside and just daily living activities as well. 
Excellent. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, what happens is most people are are falling into the telehealth realm, and and you know the fact is most people that are doing it are calling it quits. They're just saying it's not working, it's not helping, uh, because you you know you can't judge muscle tone through a camera. You can't do all of these different things um, that clinicians need to do to be able to help people make the progress they need. Um, so they're really being left to their own devices and and coming up with some tremendous. Uh, tremendous struggles uh, as a result of that. So when's the last time you've uh, been through any type of organized therapy? Was that in February when, when you were here? Right. We have done some like acupuncture or we've gone to hyperbaric and um, but we've really cut back a lot of things. I think that's one of the biggest messages is, you know, uh, in rehab, sometimes the break is good, but not necessarily not firing the ba brain and stimulating it but more of a focused rehab, not feeling like, because I know for myself when this happened, um, I find myself as a caregiver, I'm like, well, I'm not taking him to this. Is this not going to help him? You know, um, I put the, I think a lot of caregivers feel like they're never doing enough, right? right? And so then you have, you can't take them to therapies to do things, but actually you'll find sometimes in that stillness and silence and staying focused on, say the functional exercises you give us if we stay focused on those of what his brain really needs and focus on that not feeling like we always have to overstimulate him right. you know then there's a lot of progress that is made in that scenario as well absolutely i appreciate you sharing that because that is something we advise folks all the time is is taking a step back you know, it's this, um, our brain is constantly being pulled in different directions, particularly in the brain injury world, when you have all these providers you're working with, you have all these groups you're involved with, um, you know, just advice coming from all angles and with good intentions, people just want to do, 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 do. So I, I think taking that step back to really assess, you know, what seems to be working the best based on past experience, um, but taking that time to be somewhat mindful, you know, just to, to you know, listen to what um, gut instincts tell you, to what your brain is telling you. Um, yeah, but uh, super important to take that break. What, you know, what, what are the biggest struggles? And, and you all are past, you know, many of the stages that uh, a lot of the folks we're hearing from are in, but you've been there, where it's very difficult for, for um, you know, family members to work with one another uh, for successful rehabilitation, right? We rely on the providers to provide that because, you know, if we get in the way, we often become a target, so to speak. Um, and that's one thing we're hearing from people is the mother or the father or the sister or the brother, whoever is really helping out most with the rehabilitation, they're now becoming the physical therapist or the speech therapist or the occupational therapist, et cetera. And uh, they're becoming a target because there's just that family dynamic that is very difficult to get around, uh, at least until you've got to a certain stage. So now therapy is kind of you know, falling off and going downhill because there's animosity, there's fights, there's, uh, you know, there's disdain, there's uh, just lack of people wanting to do the activities because they're being told to do it by, you know, the people they love and, you know, the dynamics there we could talk hours about, but you having been through that point, do you have any kind of suggestions or advice or guidance for people that are running into those, those brick walls right now? I think uh, finding exercises or, you know, therapies that are maybe a little bit more, um, um, what's, um, I would say like passive for me, like the lasering or, you know, the Resimax or stuff that doesn't really involve me having to do it. Right. Um, I've actually taken, when we did NeuroSage, remember that video that we made for yeah. NeuroSage and I played that for him because mm -hmm. I find things that he really connects with that'll give me a second to do something. And he actually connects that really well. He'll sit there and keep his eyes on it. And I put the lasers on him and I'm able to do other things. So I know that he's getting, stimulation correctly and I might put the resin axes on his left arm you know so finding those passive things from working with someone like yourself that can give you those specific exercises that doesn't mean that you have to physically do it and be engaged with them has right. really helped me so like Good. even say I go out for a run and he sits on his lounge chair I'll put the lasers on his feet yeah Good. and I'll have those on just blasting his feet because we know those just that light therapy penetrating in Yep. It's so helpful. Absolutely. Um, so looking for things more on a passive level has really helped me. You know, even um, our bed, we have a bed that vibrates and having him vibrating with the glasses on that blink. I mean, that's still stimulating his brain. Right. 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 And so really focusing on that 
finding those key elements, but again, having someone like yourself specifically tell us what his, he needs, because it's like, not anybody can just go Google that and find that, you know, find those specific things that they need. Um, that has helped us. But as far as like the interaction at that level where you can't really get them to participate, sometimes what I found is doing it with them. Like right. say we do some coloring. Well, I'm gonna sit down and color with him. Right. So it doesn't feel like it's always about him or that it's he's like he has to be doing this, you know? Right. Yeah. Making Good. also allowing him to decide that's what he wants to do. When right. I open the space up for him to be in control, yeah. that would help the dynamic a whole lot. Right. So three things I, I hear there, uh, you know, lead by example passive therapies, and then also to, you know, having the, you know, the buy-in from the individual. Nobody wants to do what they don't want to do. Uh, so I think that's where leading by example can all of a sudden allow for, you know, increased engagement with that. So that, that is perfect. And there are so many passive modalities out there. You mentioned laser and the Resimax tool, which many people have seen or heard about uh, these types of things through your pages, our pages. Um, and, you know, we are doing as well as so many of our great colleagues are doing more and more distance consultations. We've always done it, but there's naturally been a huge uptick in that over the past four or five months. And, um, you know, we're working with people in, in, you know, in Europe and Australia, you name it all over the place. And, um, you can get a lot of these devices shipped to locations outside the U S too. So I know people outside the U S will see this. Um, you know, there are, there are many, many ways. And even from a cost standpoint, obviously over the years, you've accumulated quite a, uh, a home gym I worth of, worth of stuff, you know, including big old bicycles and, <laughs> I would love to to have the playground that you all have there, but okay. you know, but it's time, effort, and and it's what you put your resources and your focus on, and and it happens because that's what you've done. You have focused on it, and you've, you know, you you've gotten it because of your, uh, you know, constant drive and desire, both of you to to move past and and to constantly get better and better. So, uh, that's great. Passive therapies, um, we tell people that all the time is a way to really unload, step out of the room, and you can listen. People can listen to the um, the pre previous episode we did about caregiver self-care. So when the caregiver leaves the room, it's not just, you know, crying, which a lot of people do, or, you know, kind of uh, yelling into a pillow, but getting on the treadmill or going outside, doing something to unload. So equally, uh, people are de-stressing because if there's that one stressor that remains, the other person will pick up on that and it'll start, you know, oh, yeah. it'll start that repelling again. And that's a huge topic right there finding that rhythm with between the two yeah. like myself as a caregiver and the, my husband or well you know caring for him if he can sense when i'm fearful or if i'm stressed or we do a i'm telling you joy and laughter and having fun like there's no better medicine than that and we right. really focus on that yeah. um even Could if it's split second like if i can tell that he's feeling my energy i would be like okay laura step back and we just do something like kick a soccer ball or something cool you know so i think that's important to find those little things that make the other person smile you know yeah. and just kind of engage them because sometimes that brain will just check out and i'm like okay come back <laughs> right right, right. now that's great i and that you said that about kicking a soccer ball i was just about to ask you some examples because you know some people are are, are just simply not as apt to be spontaneous or, you know, create those moments of joy in the middle of chaos or stress. Um, so any other things, you know, that you would recommend, you know, shoot nerf, nerf things at each yeah. other or something, or, you know, yeah. uh, you said kicking a ball, what else, what else? Yeah. And what I want to say with that is, you know, a lot of people think that therapy or any kind of brain rehab has to be so structured sometimes, but doing the little bits here and there, that's kind of more, we do have a routine of what we do every day. I make sure that we do certain things. Um, but uh, we do kicking soccer balls. We might um, like just dance. We do a lot of singing Excellent. together. You know, sometimes if I just feel like the energy is coming up or I'm kind of, he needs to be engaged, we'll just sing a song that he, and, or we'll go through like, you remember how you had us go through all the letters? Right. And say a word for every letter. Right. We just out of nowhere, I'll engage him with that. Right. So um, wow. just the things like that. Kicking soccer ball is big time. Um, and um, we go, get outside on the porch a lot of times and put on colored lenses and just look outside, um, just kind of refocus into nature. Good. 
Yeah, absolutely. And for people who don't know, um, you know, we'll, we'll go through letters of the alphabet, start at the letter A and, you know, do different categories. But one of the things too, to, to kind of shift the mood to be a little bit more positive is, um, you know, starting with the letter A and naming a positive word for each letter. So, you know, A, awesome, B, beautiful, C, cheerful, whatever. It's really hard to be in a bad mood when you're, when you're naming these things off. Um, so it'll start to change mood pretty quickly. Um, awesome, awesome, awesome. Cool. So that said, um, which is leading to the um, kind of despair for a lot of people is the isolation socially. My goodness, what started out as a month or two, now we're approaching six months of isolation, you know, particularly for folks in your case where you even said, you know, in the bubble, so to speak, because yeah. you don't want to risk having to go to the hospital or do something like that. If there's, you know, if there's a cough or if there's anything. So uh, what are you doing about the, you know, aside from the fun factor, what are you doing about the isolation? That's a tough one. And I know a lot of people are feeling that um, really sticking to a routine a bit, you know, our days go by so fast. Um, I know that we're sleeping probably more than we, <laughs> more. I think everybody's probably getting a little bit more rest than they need to, or, well, you know, are used to. Um, for the isolation, I just really um, I haven't been the best about that because we do need to get out and around people more. Um, just getting out, walking our dog around the block. Um, getting outside onto the deck. Um, we're about to landscape our backyard, which I'm really excited so we can actually get outside a whole, whole lot more. But um, isolation, I think that's a tough one because you know we get so much with engaging with other people. Right. So I know a lot of people struggle with that. Um, yeah. And people have been sure. relying on things like this Zoom, but we know clearly certain neurochemicals and, and hormones are not released with this type of thing. Uh, right. You know, when we see you guys, it's a whole different ball game than talking this way because, you know, oxytocin release and all these different things that, you know, kind of bind people together and, and, and allow them to um, grow uh, in, in many different ways is just not happening. So, you know, I'm personally not, aside from doing webinars and things like that, I'm not a Zoom fan. You know, I'm not Zooming my family. Uh, I'm just doing the regular old phone call because it's kind of the same thing. And everybody has their different level, level of coping. So I'm not saying don't Zoom if that's what you're comfortable with. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's the biggest challenge right now is how, how people get that social connection because that's such a big part of that healing equation. And, um, and, and not just healing from things like traumatic brain injury, but you know, things we were kind of talking about before, kind of world healing and, and you know, uh, nation healing and, and all of that. Yeah. yeah. I know. I think that we just, yeah, that's, it's a really tough one. And I think it just goes back to the positivity and keeping our vibration high and just realizing that this is not going to be forever and that, you know, we're going to all one day reconnect. Right. And, um, but it's a challenging one for, especially for those that don't have many people around, but right. um, just getting outside, I think, even if it's on your front porch or back, just getting out of the house and, um, getting dressed and getting going and doing things. I, think, right. I know for myself, if I find myself really kind of not just getting down, I'm like, okay, I need to go for a run. I need to do something to get myself going. Right. Um, even yeah. if it's like running up and down your stairs or something, just get your blood pumping. Right. Yeah. And like I said, the basics too: get up, take a shower, get dressed, make your bed, you know, all of these things you would do hopefully before you go to work or do whatever it is you were doing anyway, uh, because that neurologically leads you into the, the daily routines. So, uh, you know, that's great, great, great advice. Awesome. So um, <clears throat> what have you run into any specific challenges? Again, I know you all have been at this for some time and have kind of mastered the home home rehabilitation, so to speak. I mean, I, I tell people all the time, you know, you're a far more experienced clinician than so many clinicians I know, um, you know, but that's, you know, of course, by um, complete circumstance. And, and, you know, we appreciate you all because of how you are able to motivate others. Um, but what, what are the big challenges you've run into with this particular situation over the past five, six months in terms of home rehab, if you care to, to share? Yeah, I, I think like a lot of people, um, just everything going on, it's the weight of the world and just feeling it energetically that it gets me down. And then it's like, I don't want to do anything. And then, you know, the next, he's not going to do anything. So really just staying in that positivity, finding, you know, um, I, I find myself don't even, I don't even get on social media or whatnot because I just, it's so negative. So I know that for many it's, it's, you're getting pulled in every direction with fear right. and trying to stay in the positive. So, um, 
you know, I've gone through swings for myself of negative, negative, negative everywhere I look and having to pull myself out of that. So I think for those that are caregivers, you're already having to pull yourself up positively <laughs> with what you're having to deal with because you're dealing with somebody else. Um, that just being aware of when you're being kind of pulled down more and more and stepping away from that, right. you know? Absolutely. Being conscious of it. I mean, uh, we could get into it, but, you know, realizing that everything in life has frequencies and like sometimes listening to the news is not the best thing to do. Right. I mean, right. that frequency of that negative and fearful is not going to help anyone. Yeah. And even if people aren't actively engaging in the negativity, what happens is sometimes far more, uh, you know, damaging, if you will, neurologically, or things that will perpetuate fear and worry, or even just reading comments on a negative thread. You know, people get pulled into the comments. They, you know, they even have memes for that. You know, people, you know, eating the popcorn, just waiting to see what happens next. But that is incredibly damaging. Uh, it yep. really is. And there's, you know, and we know there's nothing we can do about any of this stuff that people are arguing about, but I really feel one of our biggest, uh, you know, kind of uh, bits of advice, as simple as it sounds, it's the most difficult is getting people to really retract from social media use at this point, particularly going into a very kind of heated um, election season. And um, it doesn't matter what side of the fence anybody is on, the, the, the hostility and everything is growing tremendously, the uncertainty, the fear, the worry, the most damaging emotions neurologically are being, activated every single day multiple times per day so if people can really um, back off on the technology i think you know a lot of the problems would would kind of you know get themselves uh, a bit further away but naturally with more time on our hands we're doing more of that so i appreciate you bringing that up good deal that's kind of what do you think honey <laughs> what do you got what's what's your favorite part of being home john why do you like to be home Anything. You like anything? to do anything. Yes. Yeah. Anything with me and who? Yes, sir. Me and who? Who and him? Me and you. Me and you. And you Kaya. Wanna... And Kaya. Yes, that's it. Kaya. How is Kaya? Oh, she's amazing. I gotta say, having a pet, especially in this time, is amazing. You know, he interacts right. with her more than ever before. Right, so, right. So as a caregiver, you know, if you don't have a pet in some way, it's nice. I, I know that for him, interaction with her is right. really helped. Yeah, it's, um, that is such a big point. I'm glad we just had that little conversation because, yes, more and more people we're seeing are getting, you know, quote unquote therapy dogs, um, but, you know, pets, uh, particularly, I, you know, I tend to favor dogs, so I, I will uh, do that. But there, there's something about, um, there's something about dogs and they're just very perceptive. They understand, they know when enough is enough. They know, um, you know, when people are not feeling so good. So there's so much, so much good that can come from that. And I know people will, f you know, kind of fight about expenses and responsibilities and everything around an animal. Um, but you don't always have to get a puppy. I highly recommend not, not getting a puppy because yes, that will be stressful and probably not something that will make your life a lot easier in the short term. Um, but there are plenty of animals that can be rescued and, you know, and you, you can learn about the temperaments of the animal from the, the shelters that they're in. So yes, the animals by far, and they can unload the caregiver as well to dissipate some of the stress uh, there. So um, awesome, awesome, awesome. I think anything that like, you know, for us, because we're into our backyard, I'm going to really work on finding the place for him to garden or just finding tasks that, you know, makes them feel like they have something to do. Like he feeds Kaya, he right. takes Kaya out. He, you know, that's his responsibility. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, good, good. Who wouldn't, who wouldn't? That's awesome. Yeah, you know, I, I think, so what I'm hearing through a lot of this is really just kind of getting back to basics, really. It's not necessarily about the high level neurological rehabilitation protocols, et cetera. It's really get outside, get some sunlight, your daily routine, you know, using passive modalities to help decrease the stressors, you know, do what brings you joy, uh, do it often, uh, you know, eliminating the negative things. So it's, it's things we should be doing anyway. We just need to do them now more than ever. Um, to the point about going outside, Yes. I mean, you can take all the vitamin D supplements you want in the world, but if you're not getting out in the sun, you know, there's, there's going to be challenges. It impacts our sleep wake cycles. It impacts our um, stress responses. It impacts so many different things. So um, it's amazing to me that people have more free time and 
they're spending less time outdoors. You know, it, it, it's just, it's, it's kind of um, counterintuitive. You figure people would be doing more. And I understand there's safety factors, but at least in regions like ours, it's very easy to get outdoors. Even if it's your own backyard and you're in a bigger city, you know, there, there's ways to do it. There's ways to do it. So what, what kind of thoughts do you have? Do you have any, anything in particular around this topic or anything related to it? Um, I just know for a caregiver, it's tough. And I just say, hang in there. We're going to get through this. And sometimes having to step away from everything is not always a bad thing. So don't, I know that I find myself questioning, oh my gosh, I'm not taking him to this. I'm not doing this, but it'll, it's going to be okay on the other side of it. Okay. Um, and that, you know, just hang in there. Right. Can I ask your thoughts too on, this is a big one. People ask us all the time, should I join this group or that group? You know, Facebook is good for many things. Um, you know, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of support groups out there now. And it's not that all are bad, all are good. There's, you know, there's good and bad and in, in, in everything. But, um, you know, do you have any thoughts on, on that? Because I know more and more people are relying on support groups to get advice because they can't see their practitioners. They can't see their, you know, their, their functional neurologists or whoever. Um, so they're relying on support groups to more and more. I'm seeing it that they're um, getting uh, extreme amounts of advice in these groups. And, and that's a bit of a double-edged sword. Um, right. Do you have any thoughts to that end? Um, gosh, I, I you know, I think it's just, you've got to go with your int intuition. Yeah. Um, if it feels like it's too much, right. then just step away and put it to the side. You know, everyone's going to have advice about something. Right. Um, it's, um, everyone wants to help, you know, and right. that everyone has the right intuition or intuition. Oh my gosh, not intuition, intention to help. Yes. But um, it doesn't mean that right then and right there that is what you need so right. you know i've always said i have a folder that i put things in like if i need it at some point i can go there like if it right. feels like the right time for it so i you know as a caregiver um you know just be open just be open and what feels like it fits with you like don't put more stress on yourself and feel right. like you have to do what everyone else is doing because what everyone else is doing is not what always what you need right. so but it is nice throwing things back and forth and having that feeling of helping someone else. I right. get a lot of joy out of that. So right. um, excellent. And you do tremendously. Uh, and, and we certainly steer people towards resources like yours because of the positivity factor and the proactive and the, you know, always doing better, striving to be better, understanding there's challenges and pitfalls, but really how to overcome them. You know, I think uh, maybe more towards my, my, my question or thought was um, we see a lot of folks because we deal a lot with the, the crossover between things like brain injury and addiction, uh, and we're seeing just uh, addiction and suicide rates skyrocketing right now. And uh, obvious, obvious reason, and this is probably going to continue as such. So we're seeing a lot of people kind of bearing their souls in these, in these online forums. And, you know, we're, I guess we're seeing some inherent dangers there. So, you know, we're probably caution people to, you know, work within your circles of influence, you know, get with counselors, licensed professional counselors, even certain hotlines that are available, um, you know, as opposed to just kind of, putting it all out there for the world to dissect, uh, so to speak. Right. Yeah. And try to find someone that you can connect <laughs> with. I mean, and journal. Journaling is amazing. Absolutely. You're not always focusing on the technology aspect, because we've got to remember technology. There's a lot of screen things coming at us. There's a lot of that's hitting our brain, right? And you've talked right. You, we could talk about that forever. <clears throat> yeah. But, um, maybe stepping away from technology and just sitting with yourself during this time. Right. and finding more, get outside and start journaling. Yeah, that's um, perfect. Yeah, that's we recommend that all the time. And we're always giving people little journals to write in because it, it, it's such a great brain exercise for sure. Right. Yeah. And there are a lot of people out, there's a lot of good supports, you know, and if, I think um, know that you're not alone. Right. Um, but uh, it, it's tough for people. I, I can't imagine some people that are just really, really struggling with that. I'd say just reach, have an accountability partner, you know, find yeah. someone that you trust and have that person there that, you know, if you feel really down or that you're at kind of wit's end, just reach out. Right. Absolutely. I and appreciate then also that. check in with people. You know, I find myself, I'm not as much on my phone, but sometimes it's nice to check in with people. If it, if that person pops in your head, maybe that's, you need to check in with them, right? right. So yeah. um, take that kind of, just check in with people because I think a lot of people need other people at this point, even if it is, you know, remotely. 
Right. Awesome. So just to kind of shift gears and, you know, kind of close up on some thoughts about how people can really, um, you know, up the ante on their, their home, their quarantine hab, so to speak, uh, for now until they can get back to their normal routine, um, whatever that looks like. How do you, and I know you all do such a tremendous job and, and I, I wish we could kind of bottle up how you do this and give it to everybody, but how do you keep things novel? We talk about, you know, people are, I, I think we were talking about this before, um, is that Kaya? Yeah. <laughs> is that, Hiya! She's letting in? <laughs> no. Oh, I thought you were letting her in. I was going to say, hey. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's tremendous right brain activation from new things, right? And now people are kind of holed up in their, you know, their, their homes and, you know, their tiny apartments and, and they're not getting this novel stimulation on a regular basis, even by just going out and driving and going into stores and doing whatever. Um, so the right brain is really suffering as a result of this entire, uh, you know, quarantine pandemic uh, thing going on here. So novelty, new things, the brain thrives on it fun, uh, exciting, engaging. How do you keep things novel? I know through your, you know, your, your, your prior vocation, career, you know, what you did, it was always about learning new ways to do things. So it's kind of <clears throat> embedded or ingrained into you, but do you have resources you go to, to learn new exercises or ways to mix things up or what, what do you do? I just am spontaneous, yeah. you know? I just try to be spontaneous and where are you going? Letting Kai in. <laughs> I just try to be spontaneous and like say I'm doing something with them and I think of something else. I'm like, oh, let's just try it this way. So I'm just trying to always, you know, not do the same thing and fall into that repetitive, right. you know, motion of things. Um, and also giving him the space to be spontaneous yeah. okay. and for him to be creative. Yeah. Um, I think that's huge as well. Um, but as far as going and looking for things, um, gosh. Hi, my, I don't mean to put you on the spot there. I know some people just naturally have that ability and, and others really struggle with it. They really do. Yeah. yeah. It is challenging. Um, I think That's just open your gut, just connect right. with yourself, especially in this time that you don't have so much outside things to do. I think this is the time for everyone to just slow down and right. check in and, um, be present. Yeah. And I think even to writing, you know, for those that aren't super spontaneous, you know, when you're on the spot and frustrations are coming in and you can't figure out what to do, that's not the time to decide how to be spontaneous because it's just going to lead to further frustration. Um, so I think, um, you know, what can be done is, um, you know, writing things down, just thinking about ideas when your mind is relaxed and you don't have to worry about it, uh, write those ideas down and then implement them as you get into, you know, into the routine, so to speak. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Good, good, yeah. good. Do you have imagination? I guess, you know, we all don't, we're so logical and this and this and right. this, just try to tap back into that imagination. Again. Right. And I, I think too, I'm going through this right now. Uh, you know, my oldest daughter is, you know, is much more kind of left brain like me and, and um, you know, it's just orderly and detail oriented and, you know, difficult to be spontaneous. Uh, but she's just got engaged in theater a couple of years back and this is really helping with that. My point with that is what they're doing is they're offering a lot of online improv classes and things like that. So there's so many things to do. People can do online classes for free to learn how to be more spontaneous. So I think there are, are resources out there people can tap into. I don't have any uh, direct uh, links at this point, but just, you know, look it up online somewhere. I'm sure that you can find it. And there are some great apps, you know, we don't, that I've Googled for him, just even if they're not too challenging, just like spelling and stuff. And he right. just loves them. You know, mm -hmm. they're just like basic, even if, um, and I've done a lot of um, ordering workbooks off Amazon. Right, uh, right. And he's just nailing through workbooks, you know? And right. Yeah. Kind of things like that. Just Very cool. Yeah, there are even getting into you just, you know, tried and true games. I spy, you know, things like that. Uh, it's we had a, a family doing that in the office today. And then we, they were doing all these cool other games where they would take two things and take one part of the word from one thing, one part of the word from the other. They put it together to see if the other person could, could figure out what two things they were talking about. Yeah. Um, so it was a, um, a pretty cool thing. So there's so many things you can certainly do. But, you know, oh, you can always go back to I spy, right? That's the, uh, <laughs> the tried and true. Uh, that's the one I remember. All right. 
Awesome. Well, I appreciate you all so much. Um, you yeah. know, always, always super helpful and, um, you know, really, uh, can't say enough about how much you, you, you all positively influence people in their journey, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, something that just happened or whether people have been at it five, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, you all just continue to inspire because of that positivity, that, you know, that fun, the joy, everything you bring to it. So um, can't say enough. You, you all have helped so many people that you have no idea that you've helped. So thank you. Thank you. We're so appreciative of you and all your help of just these tools that we have, you know, to do um, right. being at them. So we got to go back yeah. and see them, right? Got to get out here. Make a go trip. Pick. Come to the mountains. Absolutely. Thank all you right. so much. Yeah, thank you. See you, John. Take care. We'll talk to you soon. But um, you all have an awesome, awesome weekend. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you person to person real, real soon, okay? All right. Thank you. All right. Take care. See you all. Bye.